This dude's a legend. Oh my goodness! He broke his ankles! He is Houdini! What a play! Since 1935, there have been many college football players to have the distinct honor of winning the Heisman Trophy. Virtually all these names went on to have careers in the NFL. However, not all were created equal. Let's sort through the best and worst Heisman winners in the NFL and even discuss a few that never played a single snap in the league. Perhaps the best Heisman winner to ever grace an NFL field, Barry Sanders' list of football accomplishments is longer than the Great Wall of China. The 1997 co-MVP won two Offensive Player of the Year awards and became the third player to rush for 2,000 yards in a season. Sanders still on his feet. The 10-time Pro Bowler and 6-time First Team All-Pro selection led the league in rushing yards on four occasions. Sanders accumulated over 15,000 yards in 10 seasons with the Lions, good for fourth on the all-time rushing list. From one Lion to another, we go to Doak Walker, who won the trophy with SMU back in 1948. The Hall of Fame running back helped lead Detroit to two NFL championships in the 1950s, making plays on the ground and through the air. Walker racked up five Pro Bowl appearances and four first-team All-Pro nods, not to mention he was a hell of a place kicker, too. If you're looking for versatility, look no further than Lamar Jackson. Jackson takes it himself. Look at him turn back and forth. Oh! He broke his ankles! Now he's got an entourage! And he's got a touchdown! He is Houdini! What a play! The electrifying abilities of Jackson led voters to make him only the second unanimous MVP ever in 2019. That season, he broke Michael Vick's single-season QB rushing record with 1,206 yards on the ground. Lamar keeps, he's got the record. And now the all-time single-season rushing record for a quarterback belongs to number eight, Lamar Jackson. Although postseason success has eluded Lamar so far in his career, his two Pro Bowl appearances and a first-team All-Pro nod already make him one of the best Heisman winners we've ever seen play on Sundays. Staying with the theme of mobile quarterbacks, how about captain comeback Roger Staubach? Perhaps the best service academy player in history, Staubach made his mark with the Cowboys winning two Super Bowls in the 1970s. On third and goal, Staubach. Touchdown! The man deemed to have been the most valuable player in today's game, Roger Staubach. And what a story that is. The Hall of Famer was the winningest quarterback of the decade, making six Pro Bowl appearances. Staubach was the NFL's leader in passer rating on four occasions, and believe it or not, he coined the all-important term, Hail Mary. Roger, he's going long, down the near sideline for Drew Pearson. Pearson makes the catch at the five, touchdown! Would you believe it? Staubach hit Pearson on a 50-yard touchdown. After the game, they just said to me, Roger, what were you thinking about when you threw the ball? And I, I just said, well, I, I closed my eyes and said Hail Mary. Staubach's teammate in Dallas, Tony Dorsett, took home the Heisman with Pittsburgh in 1976 and the NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year award the very next season. And there goes Tony Dorsett. With over 12,000 career rushing yards, it's not hard to see why Dorsett earned a bust in Canton. Dorsett made four Pro Bowls throughout his career and retired as the Cowboys' all-time leader in rushing yards and touchdowns. Dorsett's successor in Dallas was another Heisman winner. That would be Georgia's Herschel Walker, who started his pro career in the USFL. The multi-talented back was effective both on the ground and through the air for the Cowboys, Vikings, Eagles, and Giants. The two-time Pro Bowler racked up 1,000-plus yards from scrimmage in each of his first nine seasons. A little beyond the 10 because they can get a first down. Oh, look at Herschel Walker fight and score! Walker finished his career with 84 total touchdowns. 
following the prestigious line of SEC backs to win the Heisman was Alabama's Mark Ingram in 2009. Partially responsible for igniting the greatest football dynasty we've ever seen, Ingram was more than just a Heisman winner to many in Tuscaloosa. At the pro level, he compiled five seasons of more than a thousand scrimmage yards and three seasons with double-digit TDs. The three-time Pro Bowler was a part of the greatest rushing offense of all time with Baltimore in 2019, accounting for a third of the team's record number while adding 15 total touchdowns. Jackson, the spin and toss. Ingram makes a man miss. Diving. Touchdown. And on first down, it's a handoff to Mark Ingram, bulldozing his way. Ingram in midfield and dragged down from behind. Fast forward six years to another Crimson Tide runner to take home the trophy. Derrick Henry plowed for over 2,200 rushing yards and 28 scores his junior season. Foreshadowing more to come, Henry became the most recent back to reach 2,000 rushing yards in a season. He ran around, over, and through his opponents, capturing the Offensive Player of the Year award in 2020. He almost got him to jump. Yes, he did. He gives it to Henry. Henry trying to get to the outside. Just shoves the defender, Josh Norman, to his backside. <laughs> when you come in against Derrick Henry, you better go low. Do not stand up with that man and let him just <laughs> throw you out of the club. From 2019 to 2022, no player in the NFL had more rushing yards or touchdowns than King Henry. The Bama product even led the Titans all the way to the AFC Championship game in 2019. If you've won the Heisman as a running back and been drafted by the Titans or Oilers, chances are you're having a great career. Eddie George won it with Ohio State in 1995. Like Dorsett, George also won the Offensive Rookie of the Year award the season after taking home the Heisman. From there, the former Buckeye rattled off 7,000-yard rushing seasons over nine years in the league. On first down, Eddie George, room to run, up the middle, midfield, and there he goes! to the 10, touchdown! The four-time Pro Bowler is a member of the 10K Rushing Club and the Titans' all-time rushing leader, for now at least. The Tyler Rose, Earl Campbell took home the hardware back in 1977 and talk about an immediate impact. On second and eight, Campbell just outruns everyone to the right, look out! He's gone! He He's gone! gone. His head down, 80 yard touchdown. This is over. Campbell led the league in rushing in his debut season, winning both Offensive Rookie and Player of the Year in 1978. He terrorized opposing defenses with his bruising running style. The 1979 NFL MVP led the league in rushing yards and yards per game for three straight years to start his career. Third down, a lesson to Campbell, first down and more. With three first-team All-Pro appearances, five Pro Bowls, and a gold jacket to his name, Campbell is truly one of the greatest Heisman winners to ever lace him up. Can't forget LSU's Billy Cannon, who secured three AFL titles with the Oilers. Cannon won the Heisman in 1959, then turned down the NFL after being drafted first overall. He was the first pro football player to make $100,000 in a season. Cannon was a multifaceted playmaker who flourished in the 1960s. Speaking of the Bayou Bengals, how about Joe Burrow? In 2019, he put up arguably the greatest single season by a quarterback in NCAA history. Two years later, Burrow's magic rubbed off on his Bengals team as they shocked the world on their way to reaching Super Bowl 56. You gotta get it out. There it is to the end zone, and he comes down with it. Outrageous. What a catch. Cincinnati is heading to the Super Bowl. The 2021 NFL Comeback Player of the Year has led Cincy to back-to-back -back AFC Championship games and has plenty more left in store for years to come. How about another Heisman quarterback who wore number nine for Cincinnati? That would be USC's Carson Palmer, the number one overall pick in 2003. Palmer had a criminally underrated career as a pro. He ranks 15th all-time in passing yards and touchdowns and finished tied for second in the MVP race in 2015. Blitz coming, Matthews, 
Palmer stepping away at first. Palmer extending the play. Nobody there. Crosses the field. Larry Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald is going to take it into Green Bay territory. Larry Fitzgerald inside the 30. The 20. If he Larry scores, it's over. It's insane. And the idea that Carson Palmer, who is not known for his mobility, could scramble around and then somehow find Larry Fitzgerald, I have seen everything. The three-time Pro Bowler compiled six seasons of 4,000-plus passing yards and six more with 25-plus TDs. Fellow USC Trojan O.J. Simpson won it back in 1968. As the first 2,000-yard rusher in NFL history, Simpson captured the league's MVP award in 1973. The Hall of Famer led the league in rushing yards on four occasions and was named a first-team All-Pro five times during his 11-year career. Following the tradition of Trojan Heisman winners was the great Marcus Allen in 1981. Known for his longevity at a position in which we don't see many last long, Allen racked up 123 career rushing touchdowns over 16 years. He ranks third all-time behind fellow Hall of Famers Emmett Smith and LaDainian Tomlinson. Allen won the Offensive Rookie of the Year award in 1982 and in 1983 delivered the greatest run in Super Bowl history, winning the game's MVP award. Here's Marcus Allen. Cutting back up field, and Marcus Allen could be gone. This is a new Super Bowl record. Allen led the NFL in rushing and won NFL MVP in 1985. He went on to revive his career in Kansas City, where he played until age 37. Move over, Walter Payton! Marcus Allen now has more rushing touchdowns than any running back in the history of the National Football League. And the fact is, the Raiders have had some of the most legendary Heisman winners ever. There was Stanford's Jim Plunkett in 1970, who was Marcus Allen's quarterback in that Super Bowl 18 win. Three years prior, Plunkett became the first minority QB to hoist the Lombardi Trophy in his first Super Bowl win against Philadelphia. Plunkett on a straight drop back. Here comes the rush. Steps up. Can't find anybody yet. Tits off running to the left. Throws on the move. And it's caught by King at the 40. King takes over the 50. He'll go all the way. Nobody knew. To the 20. To the 10. To the 5. Touchdown Raiders. Tim Brown won it in 1987. Touchdown Timmy went on to have a Hall of Fame career in the silver and black. The Raiders' all-time receiving leader deservedly earned his spot in Canton after posting nine straight 1,000-yard seasons from 1993 to 2001. 35. Pocket holds up. There's Tim Brown, and there's the catch he was looking for. He is now the all-time reception leader in Oakland Raiders history. Brown made nine Pro Bowls and ranks top 10 in career receiving yards and touchdowns. University of Michigan legend Charles Woodson beat out Peyton Manning and Randy Moss for the Heisman in 1997. Here's Plummer into the flat, picked off, and here we go the other direction. This will be the Heisman Trophy winner, Charles Woodson. Woodson played 11 seasons in Oakland and another seven in Green Bay where he won Super Bowl 45. As one of the greatest DBs to ever play the game, Woodson won both the Defensive Rookie of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year awards during his career. Lighted to pass intercepted by Charles Woodson. His ninth of the season. He's got a big return on. Down the sideline. He's in. The Hall of Famer made nine Pro Bowls and is tied for second all-time in pick sixes with 11. Can't forget another great Michigan man in Desmond Howard. While his career as a receiver never took off, Howard scored eight career punt return touchdowns and was the MVP of Super Bowl 31. Kick goes to Desmond Howard at the one. Desmond Howard is off. You better turn it on or he's gone. Desmond Howard all the way. The Packers also drafted Paul Horning, who won the Heisman in 1956 and went on to become a two-time All-Pro. The 1961 MVP won four NFL championships with Green Bay, and his versatility as a runner, receiver, kicker, and passer inspired an annual college football award named after him. 
sticking with great runners in the 1950s, we have Alan Amici, perhaps best known for scoring the game-winning touchdown in the greatest game ever played. Amici won two NFL championships with the Baltimore Colts, posting four Pro Bowl campaigns in just six career seasons. United to Amici. Amici powers in. One iconic play deserves another, right? Murray, out of the pocket. Seven seconds, six seconds. Murray heaves it downfield. It is, oh, it's caught. It is caught. DeAndre Hopkins. Miraculous. Tyler Murray more or less ran away with the Heisman in 2018. The next year, he made off with another award, Offensive Rookie of the Year as quarterback of the Arizona Cardinals. With two Pro Bowl appearances so far in his young career, the future looks bright for the former Sooner. From an Oklahoma Sooner to a Texas Longhorn, Ricky Williams broke the NCAA record for career rushing yards in his 1998 Heisman campaign. Playing on Sundays, Williams posted five straight seasons of 1,000-plus scrimmage yards to start his career. His 2002 campaign in Miami was one to remember as he rushed for a league-best 1,853 yards. Ricky Williams. Williams' career peaked in South Florida, but a few decades prior, Vinny Testaverde was just getting started with the Miami Hurricanes. The 1986 Heisman winner went on to play a mind-boggling 21 seasons for seven different teams. Testaverde to throw again. With time, down the field, has a man open and it's complete! Dietrich Ward is going to go for the touchdown! Testaverde made two Pro Bowls and ranks within the top 20 in all-time passing yards and touchdowns. Testaverde finished his career with the Panthers in 2007. Four years later, Carolina was building a future with Auburn's Cam Newton, who won the Heisman and a national title in a historic 2010 season. Super Cam went on to win Offensive Rookie of the Year in 2011 and MVP in 2015. Newton owns the NFL record for most rushing touchdowns by a quarterback with 75. Newton bends low, takes the snap, short drop, hits the quarterback draw, and he's oh! done! Somersault for the touchdown! Oh my goodness! The legend just goes on. The next trio of players burst onto the scene once they entered the pro ranks, but the common theme here is injury trouble shortening their careers. Best known for his unparalleled athleticism playing both football and baseball, Bo Jackson topped the college ranks with his 1985 Heisman Trophy. And here's Bo Jackson around the corner and down the sideline, and there he goes! hit some long home runs in baseball. He's just hit the longest run in Raider history. While his NFL career was cut short after only four seasons with the Raiders, Jackson still became the only person to make both a Pro Bowl and an MLB All-Star game. Jackson finished his career just shy of 2,800 rushing yards. One can only imagine the stats if he didn't get hurt. The 1978 Heisman winner, Billy Sims, had a red-hot start to his career, winning Offensive Rookie of the Year while making three straight Pro Bowls. Billy Sims, following Dexter Bussey, goes outside to the five, touchdown! He showed his speed. What a way to start his career. Beautiful. And Billy Sims, wide open. There he goes. Cromwell can't catch him. Through his first two seasons with the Lions, Sims racked up over 3,800 yards from scrimmage and 31 scores. But in his fifth season, Sims suffered what would be a career-ending knee injury and never played a down of football again. The 2011 Heisman winner put forth one of the most electrifying rookie seasons for one of football's most downtrodden franchises. Robert Griffin III dazzled in 2012, taking home Offensive Rookie of the Year. Tough game here. RG3 is going to run for the first down and still on his feet. RG3 is going to outrace everybody. But the second overall pick from that year's draft suffered significant knee injuries late that season, altering his future forever. Griffin was never able to regain form, finishing his career as a backup in Cleveland and Baltimore after nine seasons. 
Now, taking a look at some of the worst Heisman Trophy winners to play in the NFL, there's no better place to start than with Johnny Football. After a transcendent career at Texas A&M, winning the Heisman Trophy as a redshirt freshman in 2012, Johnny Manziel exploded onto the scene. He became the 22nd overall pick in the draft just two years later, but started only eight career games in Cleveland. Out of an empty set, Manziel feeling the pressure, extending the play, turning the shoulders, back across the green and intercepted by Jakowski Tart on an ill-advised heave from Manziel. Johnny Football's career took him to other leagues around North America, but he never returned to the NFL. From one Johnny to another, we go Nebraska legend Johnny Rogers, who took home the Heisman in 1972. But instead of joining the San Diego Chargers after being selected 25th overall in 1973, Rogers spent four seasons in the CFL. Unfortunately, his NFL career never got off the ground after just two seasons in Southern California. Matt Leinert's football career peaked in SoCal, winning two national titles with the Trojans and the Heisman in 2004. As the number 10 overall pick in 2006, Leinert wasn't marred by a career-ending injury or off-the-field issues. His play on the field, or lack thereof, was ultimately his downfall. Good drive for the Cardinals, and they sustain it. Leinert has time, waits and fires, and it's intercepted by Aiken and Dell. After an average rookie season, Leinert played his way out of the starting lineup, finishing the next five seasons mostly as a backup, amassing just 15 career TD passes. Let's go to another two-time college national champion quarterback, Miami's Gino Toretta, the 1992 Heisman winner. Toretta became a seventh round selection for the Minnesota Vikings, but saw his only NFL action with the Seahawks, a game in which he threw for 41 yards and the winning touchdown. Raiders. Coming with the blitz once again. Toretta steps up, fires, got it, Galloway at the 20, Joey at the 15, 10, touchdown Seahawks, Joey Galloway! The only back-to-back -back Heisman winner in the award's history, Archie Griffin, occupied college football's top spot in 1974 and 75. He was Cincinnati's first-round pick in 1976, and while Griffin did play all seven of his seasons with the Bengals, the production just wasn't there. The former Buckeye accumulated just over 2,800 career rushing yards and seven touchdowns in an underwhelming NFL career. Ohio State's Troy Smith was the obvious Heisman choice in 2006, where he led the Scarlet and Gray to the national championship game. Smith was drafted by the Ravens in the fifth round of the 2007 draft. He played in just 20 career games, making eight starts for two different teams. Has to be cautious. Pass is intercepted. And it's Rondé Barber. Career pick number 40. After nearly 80 years of football at Auburn University, the Tigers finally produced their first Heisman winner in 1971 when quarterback Pat Sullivan took home the award. Drafted in the second round by Atlanta, Sullivan played all four years of his NFL career with the Falcons. He saw action in 30 games but only made four starts from 1972 to 1975. University of Houston's Andre Ware became the first black quarterback to win the Heisman Trophy in 1989. Ware was taken seventh overall by the Lions in 1990, but only lasted four seasons in the NFL, making six starts. It was the first game of 1991 in Washington, 45-0. There's a pass intercepted by Jack Del Rio. That's three in the game. 1967 Heisman winner Gary Beban was drafted by the Rams in 1968, but ended up on Washington's roster after LA traded his draft rights. Beban only played two seasons in the nation's capital, failing to beat out Hall of Famer Sonny Jurgensen. Go figure. A 1999 national champion and 2000 Heisman winner at Florida State, 29-year-old quarterback Chris Wenke wasn't short of experience heading into the NFL. But after being selected in the fourth round by the Panthers in 2001, Wenke's college success never really transferred over to the pros. He was Carolina's full-time starter during his rookie season, throwing 11 touchdowns to 19 picks in a 1-15 campaign. Wenke fires a ball. Intercepted on the play. It's picked up by Ty Law with Steve Smith into the end zone. Wanky faded into obscurity for the next few seasons as a backup for both the Panthers and 49ers. 
Florida's homegrown hero Danny Werfel led the Gators to a national championship and won a Heisman Trophy in 1996. Also a fourth rounder, Werfel never ended up getting his shot in the NFL, making only 10 starts for four different teams. Second down 10, Blitz, Slade was there, it's intercepted! It's picked off on the play by Henry Thomas, breaking tackles, another one, touchdown! And now, the curious case of Tim Tebow, a polarizing figure throughout his college and pro career, the 2007 Heisman winner was responsible for one of the most miraculous stretches in NFL history, also known as Tebow Mania. He led Denver to six straight improbable wins in 2011, then stunned the football world in the wild card round. The Broncos have been in three overtime games this year. They won them all. Got him. Got him at the 40. It's Thomas at the 50. Stiffer and Gunn free to the 30, to the 20. Thomas to the 10. Denver's going on. But that was the peak of his pro career. The Patriots squashed Tebow the following week, and that was that for his career. Tebow, this will be 13 times tackled behind the line of scrimmage. This last group of players to win the prestigious award is the most unique. Surprisingly enough, they never actually played a down in the NFL. Starting with a dual threat quarterback from Nebraska, Eric Crouch won the Heisman in 2001. After being drafted in the third round as a wide receiver by the Rams, Crouch never actually suited up for an NFL game, but played one season each in Europe and Canada. Here's the snap play action. Charlie drops the throw, looks over the middle, fires over the middle. It is caught by Knox by four. Touchdown, Florida State. Fresh off a national championship and Heisman Trophy in 1993, Florida State's Charlie Ward opted not to play in the NFL after being selected by the New York Knicks. Ward enjoyed an 11-year career in the NBA. Oklahoma's Jason White is the only Heisman winner not to be drafted into the NFL without an extenuating circumstance. Later on, the Tennessee Titans signed him, but he declined to play. Ernie Davis's story provides the most tragic case among these former Heisman winners. Davis with a pitch out, off to the right side, locked up at his own 47, slips by northward of the Tollgate, now reverses his field. He swings around to the other sideline, and Ernie is off on this crackerjack 56 yard run, and it's 58 to nothing. The 1961 Syracuse legend was picked first overall in the 1962 draft by Cleveland, but never ended up playing a down in football due to his battle with leukemia an incredible talent, it's truly a shame he didn't get the chance to compete at the highest level. And then there's Jay Berwanger, the first ever Heisman Trophy winner back in 1935 playing for the University of Chicago. He was also the first ever NFL draft pick in 1936, going number one overall to the Eagles. Though for Berwanger, football never really seemed like a profession of his choice, and eventually he quit to become a rubber foam salesman.